And welcome back to the Five Spot, where we give you nothing but great news and probably great storylines as well. Uh, I'm your host, Donovan McNabb, joined with Armando Segarra. Armando, let's jump right into it. We had a great Monday night game last night uh, with the Detroit Lions and the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, the Detroit Lions trying to get back on the horse. Offensively, I was impressed by what I've seen by Gibbs uh, running the football as well as uh, their, their whole running back by committee, so to speak. And the wide receiving core of the Detroit Lions, to me, are starting to emerge. They're young. Uh, they're innovative. They have a, a lot of spunk. And it seems like uh, they're taking on the mentality and the approach of their head coach. And defensively, it speaks for themselves of what we were able to see by applying pressure to uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in the backfield and forcing them to get the ball out quickly, which is something that I guess Josh McDaniel's offense is not really predicated on the success uh, of being able to do that for a long period of time. But when I watch the Detroit Lions, you got to give a lot of credit to Jared Goff. Jared Goff yeah, was a guy two years ago. It seems like everyone just wasn't the right off. Last year, I thought he kind of reemerged uh, to show why he was worthy of that first pick of the draft when he was drafted, uh, turned things around. And this year, legitimately, I can say, I'm, I'll ask you too after this, I can say that they're top three, maybe top two team in the nfc that's what their record says they are right i mean they're they're right behind uh your philadelphia eagles and so absolutely they are they are that <clears throat> having said that by the way i i gotta apologize to you and our listeners so every time the nfl emails me <laughs> uh my my devices go crazy and it's like the nfl is emailing you the nfl is emailing you and it's, it's, that's what you heard i think on our on our <laughs> while you were talking uh forgive me for that but just transparency sake just want to let people know that i don't have tinkerbell in the room here with me um <laughs> so good to know. Uh, good to know, <laughs> yeah i mean i don't keep the little little thing fairy locked up over there somewhere so look the don't me oakland las vegas raiders right uh, i i want to say that they have the the you know the bones of a good team two years ago this was a 10 win team right. they went to the playoffs with an interim coach amid a a guy in a terrible auto accident in which he killed somebody. Uh, another dude was discovered to be carrying a gun illegally somewhere or something. Uh, and he got, you know, axed as well. Chandler uh, Jones. Yeah, exactly. Chandler Jones was being a little weird. Um, so th they two years ago were good. And Josh McDaniels has come in. And Josh McDaniels was a good offensive coordinator in New England, right, Tom Brady? Right. And um, he did. He won Super Bowl rings in New England, Tom Brady. And he <laughs> was he 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 was accomplished in New England, Tom Brady, to the point where he got the job in Denver because of Tom Brady, and then came back and then got the job in Oak in uh, Las Vegas, Tom Brady because he was good in, in New England, Tom Brady. <laughs> and so I don't know what's missing. Or... So, so, are you, so well, let me get this right for all our listeners. Are you saying the only reason he was in the position that he was as an offensive coordinator, as a head coach, back as an offensive coordinator, now back as a head coach, is because of TB12? I, I never said that, Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, I never I never said that Josh McDaniels is successful, Tom Brady, because of Tom Brady. I never said that. Um, so who's the who's part owner of the Vegas Vegas Raiders? Tom Brady. Oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> uh, dude, I mean, look, they they can't make a good quarterback decision. Right. Think about this. In last year, in his first year last year, they had Derek Carr, 
and they paid Derek Carr. They extended Derek Carr. Right. And then they decided Derek Carr is not our guy because he's not Tom Brady. And so they not only just got rid of him, they released them without getting anything in return. Anything. Right. Anything. Then they they look at the, the quarterback landscape and they go with, you know, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, who was discarded by the San Francisco 49ers. Coming off and, the shoulder injury. Right. Always, by the way, always injured, right? Yeah. Always. Yeah. So they gave him $33.8 million money for two years. Guaranteed. He's going to take that home regardless. Right. And right. he now leads the NFL in interceptions. With and he's missed two and a half games. So you, those are two quarterback decisions you got wrong. And now how do you fix it? Well, two weeks ago, uh, they had another quarterback decision. So Aiden O'Connell, which I know you like, right? Yeah, he's good. And, he's good. And Brian Hoyer, which is 38 years old. They went with Brian Hoyer and they lost the game. And they haven't scored 21, 20 plus points on offense all year. And so now if they have another quarterback decision, they're going to go back to Brian Hoyer? No, no, no. Brian Hoyer, Brian is, a, you can call him a journeyman. Um, Brian Hoyer, who uh, was in New England, uh, he was in San Francisco under uh, Kyle Shanahan and, and statistically had a decent year uh, and went back to New England to be uh, the backup to Tom Brady. Now, he's he's been in there and he's followed, I guess, Josh McDaniel, so to speak, to Las Vegas because he knows about the offense. But it just says a lot about the development and also says a lot about the evaluation of the quarterback position. Uh, Derek Carr is not going to wow you with anything, but Derek Carr also isn't going to lose you games. Uh, and what we've seen from his career in, in Las Vegas slash Oakland uh, at the time. Because remember, when John Gruden was the coach, it was a new offense, new system. He had to learn that. Uh, he did a fairly decent job, which he was rewarded a contract. And, and so now you lose John Gruden. You bring in uh, an interim coach. He leads them to the playoffs, as you talked about. Rem I remember it vividly with the game against the uh, Chargers when he was going back and forth. Uh, and that was to help them get into the playoffs. And they had a great chance of beating the Cincinnati Bengals in that first round. It just didn't happen. And that was really the last straw for Derek Carr. Now, he's doing he's doing good in, in New Orleans. Not doing great, but he's doing good. Uh, but then you look at the direction that the Las Vegas Raiders are going. And not so much just with Jimmy Garoppolo. I look at this football team. You have the leading rusher from last year on your team, and you won't give him a contract. You're not even running the football like you did last year to help him get be the leading rusher from last year. You bring Devontae Adams in, and Devontae Adams is clearly one of the best receivers in the game. Can't get him the ball. And now you're trying to force feed him. And defensively, besides Crosby and a few other guys, I would say from an emotional standpoint and from uh, a production standpoint, I would say their defense has been doing pretty well, wouldn't you say? No, absolutely. Much better than they ever did when Derek Carr was the quarterback. I mean, right. Derek Carr had a terrible defense. They have fixed the defense. Right. Funny that the head coach is an offensive guru, Tom Brady, because uh, <laughs> I don't know why, Tom Brady. But I would say to you this, they are that close from melting down because right. what, we, what you saw with Devontae Adams on that sideline last night, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, the guy has no reason to be upset and frustrated because he's got a Taco Bell store in his house. So and it's open 24 hours. So I don't know what he's upset about. He's but, not doing the breakfast commercial, though. That's, that's true. What's what's wrong with that? dude? That's Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, you got that guy in your house. Maybe you shouldn't be happy. Um, <laughs> but, but But I would say to you. Josh McDaniel said one thing last night that was absolutely true. The wide receiver is the last peg on the, on the get the big play ladder. And what he meant by that is you have to have blocking up front. 
True. The, you have to have protection from your backfield as well. The quarterback has to not be a douche and not, you know, lose his mind when he sees some pressure and actually be accurate and actually deliver the ball. And then if the wide receiver is open, he might be able to catch the ball. And the Raiders break down in different places before it ever gets to Devontae Adams all the time. Right. I think they gave up like eight sacks last night. Yeah. Um, uh, the quarterback is not accurate. <laughs> He's struggling. <laughs> he, he is struggling. And and let, let's go to the other side because I think we really need to focus a little bit more and give them a little bit more credit of what Campbell's been able to do with this football team. We talked about Jared Goff in the beginning and, and how he's played since he's been in Detroit. Gibbs now has become a star. Uh, now, I like Montgomery and what he brings to the running back situation. Uh, he's more of a power back downhill. So it's more like a thunder and lightning of from what I've seen. Uh, Gibbs being a first-round draft pick coming out of Alabama, uh, who transferred, I believe, from Georgia Tech. Um, and so what we're seeing from him uh, is really – starting to show you why he was worthy of that first pick. But the wide receiver position, I believe St. Brown um, is a guy that they had said he was dra- He was drafted fourth round, I believe. He was the fifth, 15th wide receiver drafted in his draft class. Uh, he has been nothing but consistent uh, for their passing game. And then they finally found a young tight end that has stepped in a position which we all know Hawkinson is one of the best tight ends in the game. Uh, now with the Minnesota Vikings. But they finally found a young guy that they can step in there from Iowa that they drafted, uh, quality guy that can take take the middle of the football field with their young talent. And I'm impressed by how they play, not only on the offensive side, but let's give uh, Aaron Glenn a little bit of credit, too, on the defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it also helps that you're not playing Tom Brady. But... <laughs> last night but here's the thing so okay what do you do now at running back because it was amazing what what Gibbs did he 152 yards on 26 carries so he can be Mr. Bell Cow Uh, so do you do is he your new starter or does Montgomery continue to be the guy when he's right and is able to play again uh, that's, that's going to be a thing. Let me, let me share a stat with you because I have, I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> so, so last night, last night was the first time since 1989 that a Detroit Lions running back rushed for over a hundred yards and had over 30 yards in receptions, 1989. Right. Who was okay. the running back for the Lions then? Oh, I think it was oh, Barry Sanders. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> and so yeah. that tells you that this guy Gibbs, he's good. Uh, that They're a classic kind of team. They're, I mean, Jared Goff is good, yeah. but I would say he's elite. But they have so many. I'm sorry? Is he playing elite? Was he playing elite when that pick six went back the other way? I mean, uh, I, you know, we said Brock Purdy was playing elite until three weeks ago. Kirk Cousins but, was playing elite. But remember what we said. We said we're married to one woman. <laughs> we're not married to elite. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's fluid. <laughs> it changes. I never signed a, a marriage license with elite. Okay. Uh, elite, elite goes back and forth. If and Brock Purdy ain't elite right now. <laughs> well, let's let's go ahead and move on to, to since we're talking Brock Purdy. We've had this weekend has been a telling tale, I would say, of what the class of top teams to the middle class teams, and we glorified the San Francisco 49ers. We've kind of praised the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit, obviously, with where the Cowboys may be. The Cowboys came out and were explosive against the Los Angeles Rams. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles 
battled with the Washington Commanders and end up winning that at the end. Well, we talked about Detroit. And a team that we really haven't talked about that seems to be moving up, and no one talks about their record, my Jacksonville Jaguars, my sleeper team. But what for yeah, we we can show the receipts of me talking about the sleeper team in we, in episode two or, or three, I believe. But I will say this from the San Francisco 49ers, Brock Purdy is now starting to be asked by the opposing defensive coordinators and defensive team to win the game. They're putting the ball in his hands. They're finding a way to keep try to keep him inside the pocket. He's showing mobility, but he has to win football games. Is this something that either is correctable in your eyes, or is this a Kyle Shanahan issue that he's going to have to try to take pressure off of his shoulders by doing something else? Yes, that's my answer. <laughs> Absolutely. It is correctable, but... Kyle Shanahan has to help. Also, nature has to help because, and this is going to sound like excuse central. The weather conditions? No, Trent Williams didn't play this last week. He's been hurt for a couple of weeks. Debo Samuel hasn't played for a couple of weeks. Those guys matter. Uh, Christian McCaffrey has been slowed for a couple of weeks, although he has played. Those things matter. And also, they got to do something about that defense. I mean, I know yes. we're talking about Purdy, right? Yes, but, let's go. Come on. But that defense is not the same. It's no. not angry. Right. Uh, the last couple of years, those defenses, regardless of, of, of the quarterback, has been one pissed off defense right? Uh, making plays. And this year, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but it is a fact. Steve Wilkes is a more contained person. He is a very cerebral guy. He's very smart. And he's obviously a great defensive coach. But units take on the personality of, of, of their coach. And they take it on his personality. They're not, they're not angry. They're uh, not. They're not. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't agree with you on that one. I can't okay. agree with you on that one because I'm out. Will, Will, no, no. The, the thing about Wilkes is he's a guy that will put them in position to, to be successful, but it's on the players to be that. Now, D'Amico Ryan and Salia were the same. They put them in, in positions to make the plays. Armstead and, and Armstead and Bosa are two guys that are at their positions. They're, I would say they're legitimately top five, top six at their position. I will say that. And they haven't been effective enough to change the game. Now, Bosa just re was rewarded with the big contract. Now, if that was anybody else that got that big contract, we would be talking about them of how they've been missing in games. He was missing in the Minnesota Vikings game. He was missing in, in this uh, Cincinnati Bengals game. And the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line has always been an issue over the last three years since Joe Burrow's been there pretty much. And so... When you only get three sacks, you, you get three sacks in a game, and I don't think Joey Bosa had one. There's a question of going out, well, he held out. He got his contract. His excuse was, before, I think, after the Minnesota game or so, that, well, he's working himself back in to, to game mode. And, and what kind of excuse is that? Nobody else is able to use that excuse. You've been working out. You, you're, you're a model for skills for, for Kim Kardashian. So we're seeing you posing and, and doing all these uh, these commercial shoots. So I just think for the San Francisco 49ers, one, yes, their defense hasn't created the consistent turnovers and gave them the short field. And then also offensively, Christian McCaffrey is still a great player. Kittles is still a great player. Ayuk is one of their, num there's their number one receiver. Jennings has played well for them. Even though that Debo Samuels is out and Trent Williams is out. You still have great players around Pur Purdy. He's just not able to help change the game by making those three plays in the game to help you win. And let me predict what's going to happen. They're on the bye now. Yeah. Uh, when they come back, if it doesn't, if it isn't fixed, we're this close to people starting to say, well, maybe Sam Darnold is the answer because oh. You, you know, this is a day-to-day, week-to-week thing. 
I guess you're not going to be one of those. No. Uh, this is a week to week thing. But you watch if Purdy struggles for another week or two, that little those whispers will blow up in the Bay Area. Trust me on that. I get. I, I'll say this will add to that. I don't know if they'll go so much with Sam Darnold only because they'll say Sam Darnold because he's there. But how about the Trey Lance? What if Trey Lance was still there? This offense would be able to change because of his ability to get outside the pocket and you can use his legs. That would be something that will be brought up as well. But then also, too, I, I think just kind of adding to that, and we mentioned another team, um, you know, I, what about the Kansas City Chiefs in your eyes? Now, the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs getting outside of Arrowhead, um, obviously I have an issue with, with – they're tied in, Travis Kelsey, going to Arlington, Texas to watch the World Series when you're playing in Denver after you just probably have walked through in Kansas City. So now you fly uh, for, I believe, I think, game one of the World Series, and then you get out there and lay an egg in, in Colorado versus a team that's really been struggling. And we were wondering if Sean Payton was the right guy. But it came out that, I guess, Patrick Mahomes had the flu. Is that more of an excuse to you to hear that after the game? Or is this something now that Kansas City is going to have to clean up going forward? Well, first of all, about Travis Kelsey. I, th I like Travis Kelsey more when he was a little not so in my face. He's right. everywhere now. He's on right. uh, commercials. He's, he's telling me to get another vaccine shot. He's dating this, this woman, uh, trailer... I mean, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Dr. Trailer? I mean, who are you <laughs> uh, I mean, He's going to the World Series. Dude, you're, you, you were, he's on the podcast. I liked him more when he was just a good tight end and a very right. good tight end and an outstanding right. tight end. I'm not digging him so much anymore. You need to like maybe make the main thing the main thing. Right. Um, and, you know, you've got you've got a team that doesn't have good receivers. Right. We, we talked on previous podcasts how the 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 plan uh, was to grow up, mature their receiver core. They haven't grown up or matured and time is ticking. <laughs> it's like, let's go already. Yeah. And they, uh that is a that is a problem for that team. They don't they don't have a, a, an offense that is the least bit dynamic. It is basically right. Isaiah Pacheco pitch and Travis Kelsey for eight yards. And that's not going to get it done, regardless of whether your quarterback is Patrick Mahomes or not. Yeah, and you know uh, we talk about their young wide receiving. I like Sky Moore. Sky Moore had a had a tough day uh, in Colorado. Um, I thought. Rice would be the guy, but then he gets uh, in trouble off the field, I believe. Um, and so I, I just I just look at their their position, and we have the trade deadline coming up. Is this something that I think that they can focus in on? Uh, because money is an issue. You know, you're going through free agency or, or, you know, you draft some guys in the summer that's different. But now when you're talking about trading guys and then probably have to pick up their contract or renew their contract, you still have a defensive tackle that has to get a new contract at the end of the year. Patrick Mahomes, I think, is to restructure his deal uh, to get him in that, that uh, upper echelon of, of quarterbacks per year or so because it's a long contract. Uh, and then, you know, I think the list goes on of a couple other guys that they gotta, have to pay. Let's let's talk about a few players so far in in free agency that are that, well, I wouldn't say free agency that are up for the trade deadline. Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, possibly Devontae Adams. Um, you know, Jeff. People are throwing Justin Jefferson in there, which I don't think he goes anywhere in Minnesota. Um, you know, give me two names that you're looking at that could possibly be traded. Come, come end of the day. Let me go back for a second because it takes me a while to catch up to you. Um, so, because, you know, IQ Donovan, IQ Salguero. Um, 
you mentioned the KC issues with their contracts. Right. This is how I think of it. And I'm not, you know, a general manager, but this year is this year. And that's when we're living this year. Right. Uh, those contracts for next year, you know, I don't know. This is the NFL. The window is now. It's open. The Kansas City Chiefs have, you know, the best record or tied for the best record in the AFC. They should do what they need to do to make sure that they are in the Super Bowl at the end of this year and worry about next year, next year. Uh, that's my opinion. Obviously, smarter NFL people like you will say, well, you got to worry about the structure and this and that and the other thing. I'm worried about this year if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs because I got to help Patrick Mahomes. As far as trades, yeah, you you know in his heart of heart, Devontae Adams wants out. <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of Las Vegas. That's not going to happen. Uh, Derek Henry in in uh, Tennessee, likely not going to happen. They have a quarterback now in Will Levis. Do they really play. have a quarterback? I mean, he played I mean, well. He played well in the game. Malik Willis did not, but he played well in that game. So now you're telling me you're going to keep Derrick Henry with as much money as he's he's going to be looking for instead of getting some draft picks to kind of have him sit and wait and rot while you're trying to see if Levis is the guy? They've lost four games, no? I mean, I think they've yeah, lost. That's what I'm saying. If you lose another five, six games, when you could have gotten probably a, two second-round draft picks, maybe a third or a second and a fourth, uh, and maybe get his money off the books for Derrick Henry? Wouldn't you do that? I would if it was in a vacuum, but let's face it. And you've been in this situation. The the Tennessee Titans ship off Derrick Henry. That entire locker room goes where? Probably where they already are. <laughs> yeah, because they know. it's. A, I mean, you've lost three players already, I think, to the, two of them to the Philadelphia Eagles, at least. I mean, so, you know, like Philadelphia is like, oh, oh wholesale. Uh, Vrabel, how you doing today? Yeah, you got anybody else for me? You, you know, so I just think it's it's one in which you have to look for. the. You know how these owners and GMs think. They're thinking for the future. Right now they think their season's lost. Yeah, I don't think Mike Vrabel thinks that. No, I think but the GM and owner. Yeah, maybe they, they, they're thinking ahead. I'm yeah. thinking, uh, you know, look, are you going to, would I trade Derrick Henry for a second round pick in a vacuum? Yes. Because uh, my quarterback, Ryan Tannehill is not good anymore. I trade Ryan Tannehill though, in a heartbeat, I would trade him <laughs> to Atlanta and Arthur Smith so they can go be together or I would trade him to Minnesota. I would trade him. But Derrick Henry, ooh, that hurts. That hurts my yeah, heart. True. And 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 you know, I don't think that's gonna happen. I do know this. Uh Jacoby Brissett is probably gonna get traded, or Josh Dobbs is probably gonna get traded. One of those two guys needs to get traded to Cleveland because they need a backup quarterback to to make sure that Deshaun Watson can walk. Um San Francisco's in the trade market. Pittsburgh's in the trade market. The Eagles are always in the trade market. <laughs> Lions are in a trade. He is. Howie Roseman's always in the trade market. Uh, and trying to acquire, not sell. Acquire. Right. Uh, which makes me love the guy. Um, the Chicago Bears have given, uh, what is it, Jalen Johnson permission to seek a trade because he's not happy and he's probably not going to re-sign with them and a cornerback right. is very valuable. Um, you know, the, the commanders, yes. the com Montez sweat or chase young, two, One great, of those guys, two great talents, two great talents, but you can't pay them both apparently. Right. True. Right. Right. So they're on the trade block. One of them is uh, you, you can pay one. You can't pay two. And by the way, the commander's mm -hmm. argument would be, we suck with them. So, <laughs> so, so what does it matter if we got one less of them? 
<laughs> Are you with that? You can't. <laughs> so, so in your eyes with the commanders, who would you keep? Would you keep Sweat or would you keep Young? So I would keep Sweat because he is more durable. But, of course, the teams that are, right? Uh, yeah. Young has a higher ceiling, but is less durable. Sweat has a lower ceiling, although very high, and is very durable. Teams want durable. And right now I've been told that Sweat is the more popular name on, you know, on the lips oh. of other general managers because of the durability thing. Well, it's funny because, you know, I guess conversation will be going on. Phones will be blowing up. You'll be getting a lot of emails. Uh, Insta Insta Instagram DMs will be going. Let's go to the Instagrams, the DMs with Kenny Gainwell. During the middle of the game, answering uh, messages and replying to who or whatever it is that may come out probably later on. I mean, what do what would the G? I wouldn't say GM. What is Nick Sirianni's next move with this? Is this something that he needs to address publicly or address as a team? I personally think he addresses it to the team. Um, Gainwell was not as involved in the offense at that particular time. He struggled in the red zone, fumbling it twice, I believe. Uh, ran the ball twenty-two times in the game, threw the ball thirty-eight times, but. For you to look back on it, and luckily they won, because if they lost, it would be a real big story in Philly. But going forward for NFL players, because obviously it's come out now, uh, what do you think they put as far as in the rule book or fines for these young men who are on their phones during the game? It's it's nutty, because Gainwell fumbled at the goal line uh, yes. in the second quarter of a game that the Eagles were struggling with the commanders. Right. And at halftime, and of course, the Philadelphia fans being very understanding, very yeah, loving, really? huh? <laughs> embracing of their players. You know is about the new, Is the new wave fans in Philly? I'm sorry. Is it... <laughs> it's like uh, Philly fans are just, you could speak to that better than I could. But, but so they, they, they hit him up on IG, man, and they're like ripping the guy on IG. And at halftime, he responds to one of those fans that was ripping him at halftime. Right. He's on the phone on IG responding. Um, and so that caused a career chat on Monday between Nick Sirianni and, and Gainwell. And the career chat went like this. Don't effing do that anymore. <laughs> Period. <laughs> that's it. Just play the simple. Just just leave it alone. And that's the thing that bothers me a little bit. I mean, because halftime is only uh, but a handful of minutes because one in Washington, walking from the field to the locker room takes at least five minutes anyway. You're probably in the locker room for about 10 to 12 minutes. And then you're back out on the field. So for him to answer these uh, messages, to me, one, what are you doing on your phone? Two, why is your phone even on? Three, you go straight to Instagram to what? See pictures of yourself? Or or, or what are you looking for? And then to answer, like, I, it's, it's really funny to me because being a former player in the locker room, I can't remember the time to ever be on your phone I've only seen maybe one or two guys on their phone. That's because maybe their their wives are pregnant and they were checking their phones to see what was going on at that particular time. If she may have went to the hospital or whatever, it may have been for emergency purposes. But I've never seen guys just on their phone just like, doo, doo. especially now with all the social media, like you're in the locker room taking pictures of yourself. Boom, halftime. I fumbled on the, on the, on the one-yard line. I, I just think for... For, in a, for the NFL, this is a conversation for coaches to have with their players because of the incident that happened and what it can lead to. Yeah, it's a it's a different generation of players right now, my friend. And they are social media uh, intense, maybe too social Driven. media. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, and it's a bad combination because, of course, of all the fan bases that it involved, it was the Eagles. <laughs> right, right, right. 
You, he better have – the next two weeks he have a better, better have quality games. If he does not, you talk about your DMs blowing up after the fumble. Oh, oh you can – it's going to get an overload of, of negative attention toward – uh, his DMs. It's, it's unbelievable to me that th- we're even talking about it, but it's unbelievable that he even did it. So that that just shocks me. It, it, it's it's shocking, and I'm sure he won't be doing it again because Nick Sirianni has talked to him about it. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just, dude, just don't go there. To me, I mean, the way I handle, you know, you and I are both on on Instagram and right. on uh, formerly Twitter and all that. I don't respond to most people. I mean, I got ripped on Sunday morning for no reason. What's I woke up to being ripped on Twitter <laughs> Sunday morning. Did I respond to those people? I don't care. Let them have their opinion. It's America. And so let them have their opinion. It's it's going to go away. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Will prosper. Absolutely. And so we're going to end our show with that one because that was strong right there, Armando. That might have been the best best uh, term that you've used since we've been doing this show. Uh, so I, I'd love to see us growing uh, and throwing different things out. <laughs> but here at the Fox Spot, make sure you join us here Friday. Uh, we'll get a chance to... Uh, recap the Thursday night game, talk about the games that are happening this weekend, a lot of explosive games with a lot of meaning for a lot of NFC and AFC teams, and then some college games as well. So join us back here at the Five Spot for more of what you're looking for because we're going to give it to you.